Um, so today we're going to have Vincenzo Petreca um, do a notebook on time domain data products and, um, and difference imaging today. That'll be our main tutorial uh, that we're going to start in a couple of minutes. And then we'll do breakouts after, as usual. And so we will come back to this slide at 10 a.m. and figure out what breakout rooms we want uh, for our second hour. Today's uh, notebooks that Vincenzo is going to be using, they're in the Delegate Contributions DP02 GitHub repository. So this is the slide that tells you how to get a copy of that repo in your like home user directory of the notebook aspect of the Rubin Science platform. Um, so take a quick screenshot of this slide or use the link to the slides that I put in the chat um, so that you can have a, a copy of that notebook that we're gonna use today. Looking forward for the over the next couple of weeks, um, next Friday is a holiday in the US. So there's going to be no, no virtual session at all. Friday, December 2 is going to be a stat club session. And then Friday, December 9th is going to be the last delegate assembly of 2022. It's going to be, we'll provide a year in review for a DP 0.2. So everything that has like a, a brief summary of everything new that's come out since the DP 02 data set was released, because we've had some additional tutorials come out and some additional data sets get added sort of over the last couple of months. So we will review all of those um, briefly. We're going to hear a little bit about developments happening at the RSP as well from the RSP team, a couple of short um, slides and some new features. And then most of that session we want to spend on delegate flash talks. So there will be an email go out or a message go out um, pretty soon with a link to a common slide deck where everyone can just add a slide and share what they've been working on with DP02. Um, so we get to hear all kinds of stuff that's going on out there. It's going to be pretty fun. Um, that was an old announcement. So I'm just going to flip back to this really quick. And if you're just joining us, these are the instructions for getting a copy of the notebook that's going to be used for today's demonstration. So you're going to want a copy of that Delegate Contributions DP02 GitHub repo. And I'm just going to, oops, I want to copy this without actually clicking on it. There we go. That did not work. Okay, so a link to these slides has been put in the chat uh, so you can get a copy of that notebook. Any questions, problems that we can address before we get started here? You can post in the chat. You can unmute real quick. Can be more helpful and give you this also. Okay, if no one is confused about what's happening. Um, so you should be logged into data.lssc.cloud and the notebook aspect, use the, the recommended version. Um, go ahead and pick a large container for today, even though it might, I don't know, Vincenzo, is it, do you need a large container for your notebook? Do you know? I, I tested it with a, a medium container and it works. So okay. as soon as you delete all the queries and the images that you produce, it works. Okay. Okay, so medium container at least. Go ahead and pick large if you want to. Um, yep, still not hearing any complaints or 
uh, any confusion from anyone who might be new about what's happening. The chat is always open. Um, you can send direct messages to me with questions or just post any question you have in the chat and we'll help you out on the side as the tutorial goes on. So please go ahead and make use of the chat. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Vincenzo to get started. Okay, great. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present this. We'll share the screen. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. How to disable this? Great. Okay. So today I will present a notebook mainly related to TEM domain using the data that I've been produced with DP0.2. And I will use Supernovae as the source of an, an extragalactic transient to show you how to, to, to deal with the DIA, so the difference image analysis data products. So many of this information may be already known from some of you. So something can be new, but the idea of this notebook is to put everything together into a thing so that you can use it uh, to, to do your science work. So it will be not a, a direct application to a scientific case, but it will be just an explanation on how to do things that may be useful for group work. So uh, the, the idea of this notebook was to explore the light course and to see if there were any biases in them. So uh, the first time I prepared it was to, to, to study that became a post on the community forum to see the, the effect of uh, the contamination of transient in light goals. You may have seen it. So uh, it, it is a notebook that shows how to extract light of a supernovae detected on different images. So we will query the truth table and all the DIA tables. And then I will also show you how to plot the CalExp, which is the, the, the single processed visit. So the, the exposure that you're using the template that has been used to produce the difference images and the difference images, and this for all single detection. And I will also show you how to plot light curves using the different tables that you have. And I will provide some hints, and hints because it is a draft, a work in progress, on how to execute the difference image analysis using the Rubin Sense platform with user-defined templates, which may be something useful for, for, for your work. And uh, I need to, to thank to the people from the Rubin community team because I'm using material from the tutorial notebooks, mainly from young guy, Melissa Graham and Jeff Carlin. So you will see some copy and paste of important pieces of that notebook. And special thanks also to Nevin Kapler for updating this notebook with the, the DP0.2 truth table because it was originally using the DP0.1 table. So uh, the, sorry for this long introduction. I just want to say that this type of analysis is part of a, uh, a, a project that we are doing within the, the TVS uh, DP0 task force. So if we want to work on this, trying to expand this kind of notebooks, you can join uh, our task force with uh, the, the Slack channel, TVS DP0. We have monthly telecom and we usually work to, to respect uh, um, different image analysis so time domain in general. So let's start. I will run the notebook together with you so that you can see what happens. So first cell is just a setup importing all the Rubin specific packages. These are also used for other notebooks. So something to prevent some annoying warning. This is uh, one function that is present in the tutorial notebooks. It's very important because it allows you to cancel the, the figure so that you are not using too much memory. And this is another function that I am using from the tutorial notebooks to produce cutout from a, a quad provided ra and that position. And then some parameters to have images that if you like. So you can modify this input to, to adjust the images. And then we can start. So first thing to do is 
to get a supernova. And to do so, you can use the troops table, which is the advantage of working with the simulation. So we do a query with the top service. And uh, you use uh, a degree of uh, 0 0.5 degree radius. And you use this variable equals one that returns variable object. OK, so you use truth type equal three because it returns type 1e supernova. And you use also this flag here, unique entry equal true because it ensures good truth table matches. And we limit the redshift, OK, so that this query is not taking too long. And we launch the query using something similar that we saw in all the tutorial notebooks. And another thing that I think is, it's important to mention, and that there are new truth tables that have been recently added in DP0.2. So you may want to take a look at this tutorial here. So this thing is not yet included in this notebook, but basically you have information on the simulated supernovae. So for example, you may ask to have supernovae uh, with a certain number of points around the peak, uh, with uh, certain stretch or things like that. So we are not doing this, but you may want to look at this. And I, I think there's a, a, a tutorial in preparation. So stay tuned for that. And this is the link for the schema table. So if you click here, you will be on this page and you have all the tables that are available. And for each table, if you click on it, you will see column name and all the information but the things that you can query. So while I'm talking, the query is running. I hope it won't take too much. Otherwise, I have a version of the notebook that I already run. Let me see if I can do something in the background. Uh, well, yes. Okay, I will duplicate this. Okay. Because I would like to, to do something together with you to change the parameters. So I will run this. Okay. I hope it works. So basically here it is doing this query. Okay. I will go to this other version. Sorry for this, I did not consider taking so much time. So here you see the results of the query. Okay, so uh, you can show them using a pandas table. Okay, I query just for the coordinate, the ID and the redshift, and the, the host galaxy ID, and you see all these results. Then you can use the ID to select a supernova, the supernova you're interested in, and you can do it using pandas commands to, to lock the specific entry of the data frame, selecting the ID. And here, for example, are other kind of object. You can try to play with them to see highlight curves are different. You may see that there are offsets on the differences because of the, the contamination of the, of the transient on the template. So after you do this, it is still running here. Yes. OK, never mind. After you do this, you can also get the supernova coordinates, and you will need that to, to query for images, to get images with the butler. And you can get the coordinates with the same procedure using pandas. And then you can append these coordinates to the Astrophy Scacord class. And after you do this, you need to define the the HTM ID for the butler. And so you use this cell to do this thing. And after that, you can finally go to query using the top service, the, D the DIA tables to get the light code. Okay, so now uh, a brief introduction of repetition of that. You will have an entry on the DIA source table every time a source is detected on different images with a signal to noise ratio greater than five. Then you will have a new entry on this table. And the, it, there will also be a, an update on the DIA object table. So if another DIA source table is discovered on another image, 
you will go and check if the object was already present on the object table. If it was present, the object table is not updated. Otherwise, you add another entry to the object table. So basically, if you want the photometry, if you want the light curve, you need to go to the DI source table because you have entries for each single detection. While if you're just interested in the, the total list of objects that can be detected, you can go to the DIA object table. And we will go first to the object table because we need the unique object ID, which is the unique identifier of the object. Once we get this identifier, we can get to the source table which contains all the, the exposures and we can just take the exposures the fluxes for this object ID. So we query for the object table and we basically just select the closest object within 0 0.5 arc second and after this query you will take the object ID that is the unique identifier of the object on that table, you will select it and put it in a variable that I'm calling just cell object ID. And then you have all you need to go for the source table. Let me see if this is okay, it's going. I will move to this other one because I want to do something interactive. Okay. Oh, come on. Ah, never mind. It was faster when I tested it. Okay. So we want to do it interactively. I hope it's good enough. So I changed the cell because I had this bonus cell here. We will turn it on later because I want also to show how to run the difference imaging task by producing difference images with your own templates. But to do this, it's better to use another object. I do. I did a little research for all the available supernova to find a good candidate with uh, uh, for which the, the the transient is contaminating the template. So I will show you using this object how to use a different template without the contamination of the transient and obtaining different images with good fluxes. But if you do this, the light code that you will get will not so be not good because you will have this contamination. So I will show you later this, this, this object. But now I just want to show you the light curve. So we get the, the object ID, the DI object ID. So now we can go to the DIA source table to extract the photometry. And you basically need times, and times are pulled this way, eight point tie, and you can find this using the, the schema browser. You can get fluxes with related errors. And you need to remind that Rubin will provide fluxes in nano Jansky by default, but you can also con convert them into magnitude. And we have two different types of fluxes, measurement of fluxes on the DIA source, PSF flux, which is the flux measured on the different images using a PSF fit, and thought flux, which is the flux measured on the direct image, so at the same image before doing the difference. So with this query, you select the time, this PSF flux with the error, thought flux with the error, and with these lines, you can convert fluxes into magnitude. So this thing is fine for supernovae or for objects that uh, just positive variation, but bear in mind that you have the problem of negative bias. So that's why by the default values measured on the different images are fluxes so that you can also take into account the negative fluctuations. So after this, you use this uh, del results to avoid using too much memory because you save them into this variable. And you can define masks like this that are very useful if you want to separate the observations into the different filters. So I call this U-band mask. All the uh, entries into these tables where filter name is U. And I do the same thing with all the other things. So here I show you 
how to use the mask to get only the visits you're interested in. And you basically need using the, the pandas syntax to put the name of the data frame. Then you put the mask into square brackets and then the name of the string on the column you're interested in. And then dot value, you have just the values into a list. And for example, here I am printing the list of all the fluxes measured on different images in the GBAND. Okay. If you don't put this mask, you will just get everything, all the fluxes, or all the available bands. So once you have this, you can finally plot your first flat code. So here I am defining a list with the colors that I want to use. Here's the list with the bands. And you can plot the light curve obtaining these results. So first the code, it is just my plot lead code. So I am defining the name, then the band, and then the name of the, the column and the same for flags. So there is this for loop on all the available six bands. And this is the final light code that you get where on the Y axis, you have fluxes measured on different images in nano -Jansky. But of course, you can also have a similar light curve, but using flux dot, which um, are the measures. <clears throat> Vincenzo, my uh, light curve looks different from yours. It's uh, plotting one that has a... Um, Negative GIA. Source. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because maybe right. yes, there is this bonus cell activated. But I didn't execute um, that cell. I turned it to a raw, like you did. So, well, that's strange because yeah, that's the only thing that comes to mind. Because if you activate this, you change the object ID, you change the coordinates, so you are nullifying what you did uh, the cell above. Yeah, but I made mine a raw cell like yours. Um, okay, so is the object ID the same? Let me um, add a little object ID like to the title. Uh, one second. Actually, I'm also, can I share my screen for a sec so you can see? Yeah, yeah. And it would be good to know if other people Oh, we got I have one report in the chat of someone else having a different light curve. So mine looks like this. Yeah, this one is exactly the, the one of the bonus set that I added. I remember the light curve. Mm. So maybe for, for some reason, it was running using the other object ID. Oh. Yeah, because I remember that flight cover it is exactly the one that I want to use later to show the difference imaging. Yeah, the 165039. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is oh yeah, how did that happen? Because here it's this. Uh, it's strange. And then this never gets executed. What? I have no idea. Hey Melissa, did you do a um complete run of all cells from the run? No, I've been doing it step by step. Because maybe maybe you did it. I was just thinking maybe you did a run all cells and you hadn't yet converted bonus cell to raw. That could have explained it. But if you're doing it one by one. Yeah, that could have been it. But uh, yeah, maybe you'd done that first. Okay, I've just, mine's just run now. Vincenzo, can you show your, yours again? Can you just scroll to the yeah. plot? I can compare it to mine, but I think mine's the same as yours. Uh, just a minute. Okay. Yeah, it's basically there's one with offset and one without. So yeah, that's no, why mine's, I, mine's I, the same I, as yours, Vincenzo. Okay, okay. So that's why I had them separately because I wanted to show something that resembles a good supernova as something mm -hmm. with a strange offset. Okay. okay so, so if anyone is like me, because there's a couple of people who also got the different one, I'm just going to clear everything, make sure that cell is totally raw, and then I'll re-execute. So everyone else do that as well if you got the weird one. 
Maybe just while Melissa's doing this, I'll, I'll use this opportunity to point out that this is one of the caveats of using Jupyter Notebooks uh, that people should be really, really aware of. Jupyter Notebooks are great for certain things, and I think for this sort of pedagogical, tutorial, exploratory analysis, they're wonderful. But if you accidentally execute a sell out of order, which is really common, you'll get the wrong results. And you've got to be really careful if you go out and then present something in a tutorial or a publication or in a workshop. It's something to be really, really cautious about. It's one of the bad things about notebooks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And sometimes they also can be very slow. <laughs> like it's yeah, like, that's right. You know. I think they're great for you know trying things out and exploratory analysis. But I think for me, once I've once I've come on an analysis, I will just move that to library code and call it. Yes. That way, I've got much more control uh, over the code and how it's executed. So is anyone getting some problems so far? Is there something not clear? It was just a few of us that, <laughs> well, at least one other person ended up with the other. Yeah, because I don't remember if the one that I uh, pushed on GitHub was with the cell activated or not. Yeah, the one that was on GitHub, the cell wasn't raw, but I made it raw before. Oh, okay. So <laughs> but that's my my mistake. Okay. Yeah. So it might be that for some people, but uh, okay. But the, the only difference is that you are running the code with a different object, so we will get a different uh, light code, but uh, everything should work. Yeah, everything's still working. I just couldn't couldn't figure okay. out how about the different Good. object. So I think you're okay to keep going. Okay, so uh, this is the, the same light code that I was showing you before. You see the same trend, but here, instead of using the fluxes method on the different images, you are measuring the fluxes using a PSF photometry fit onto the image before the difference. So for a supernova, actually nothing is changing. But here I'm showing you how to do the different things because there can be science cases where it is important to study the, the entire object and not just with this variating inside. So, and this is also uh, in fluxes. And then other similar plot when you use magnitudes, okay? Because we also credit for them. And this is magnitude on the difference. And this one is on the total image. So, so far, nothing strange. Another thing that you can do and can be very important while doing time domain is to extract the photometry from the force source table. And this table contains all the detections also when the uh, signal to noise is lower than five. So as soon as an object is detected at least once and is added to the source table and to the DI object table, all the other visits are uh, all the other fluxes are also measured on different images at the same location using this force photometry. And so it can be useful because it can allow you to fill the gaps where the signal to noise was not so high. So we do something similar. The only thing to be careful of, I don't know if this has been changed or not, is that the force source table, this is the name of the table, does not contain the time of each exposure. So to build the light curve, we use a join to extract the visit info from another table, which is this one, CCD visit table. And of course, you can see the information on the schema table. So this is the same query as above, more or less. And we are using the force source table, but we are also joining this one. So if I run it, we can plot the light curve. We omit the error bars because of course we will have plenty of points. So with error bars, it will be a mess. So these are masks as I did before. And with the same procedure, we plot the light curve. Of course, you see more point and the points that are here and are not in the previous one are because the points here are present also if the signal to noise is not above the threshold. 
and as well this is on the difference but you can also do it using uh, magnitude and it's exactly the the same plot okay so this depends on what you want to do if for you it's important to have more points or for you it's important to have less point but good signal to noise ratio so i'm showing you how to do all this thing so is everything clear about uh, light curves and uh, data products I hope it is. Okay, so after you produce light curves, what you can do is to get the images. So I, I show how to create the butler to get images using uh, things that are very similar to what have been shown, especially in notebook number four. And so we will start by looking at the deep code, then we will zoom in to create the butler. Uh, for, for, for and we uh, will detect a, um, just a cutout around the source of interest. And then we will also create the button for the template, the collect, and the different images. So, first thing, you instantiate the butler. And to get a quad image, you need to provide part and tract of the object. And I know that you need to do this, and I know what you need to write when you need to detect and query for different sources, because if you go to the main page of uh, DP0.2, and if you scroll down towards uh, data products, and if you click on it, you can see that there are information here on images, we see the name of the image, collects or deep quad. If for deep quad, it tells you that they are divided into tracks and patches. And if you go down for different images, it will explain what they are. And it will say you that this is the name if you want to get a different image. And this is the name if you want to get the template that has been used to produce that different image. So I don't know how much complete is this information. I don't know if there is a table, a summary table of this, but I'm using the information that are provided here together with all the notebooks that we saw in the past. So as this is still running, I will move to the one that I already run because I don't want to wait. So we were here, so okay. So this is to to get um, to get the glad image, you select part and touch, okay? And it is the results, and you use the butler providing trut and patch, and you use the AFW display using matplotlib as backend to, to plot the image. So the data ID just requires trut, patch, and the bank that you want to use, and use this command that you saw in the notebooks tutorial notebooks to select the image. And with this, we'll see the final image, which is, of course, too big. So we will zoom in to detect our uh, object of interest. And something that I want to show to you is that you can also define a color map because the default one is grayscale. So if you don't do something, you will have something like this. But this is this command that was commented here because I had in mind to do it interactively. I don't know if this one is ended. Yes, it is. So I will show you how to change it, hopefully. Yes, it's doing. Okay. So for instance, you may want to have the image having the sky as white and sources as black, and you can do it using binary. And if you run it again, you will see something like that. But you can go 
to Google to the available color maps to see all the available names, and you can get whatever is useful for you to get images. So this is another example, okay? So let's move on. And uh, another thing that is important to produce a, uh, a cutout is to get the, the pixel coordinates of the object you're interested in. So you use this function to do it. And we need uh, to detect the WCS coordinate of the image. And then we get the pixel coordinates of the supernova that we saved into th this variable. Now we use the function that we defined in section zero to produce a cutout. And we will see the result. So this is the cutout centered on the supernova. And the supernova location is uh, marked with this cyan star. And if you want to, to use the, to, to plot something on the image, as this is matplotlib, you can do it very easily with commands like this. So I am just plotting a single point, providing the X and Y coordinates of the supernova that I asked for before. So this is the marker that I want to use, the marker size and the color. So for example, you may want to change the color like this. And you can play around to mark sources of interest on your image. So this is similar to, for example, using DS9 to put regions. So you can do something similar that it may be useful. So now that we understood how to play with the images, we can get template, collects, and defects for each point on the light curve. And I want also to emphasize that there is a new tutorial notebook that is in preparation by the community engagement team on the possibility to get image cut out uh, without having to use the butler. So stay tuned for an update also for this. So as a first thing, we will print this thing, this strange thing that I queried for before. It is the CCD visit ID. So you will see these numbers and these numbers have two parts. So the first part is the visit ID and the last three numbers are the detector ID. And these are the information that you need if you want to use the butler to select a collex, a defex, or other things that you may be interested in. So with these two lines here, we split the CCD visit ID into the visit and to the detector. The detector contains the last three numbers and the visit is all the numbers before the last three. And we are selecting the first one. Zero refers to the first one on this list. So this is the selected visit and this is the selected detector. So we go here, the data set type now is the collect, data ID as for visit, the selected visit, for detector, the selected detector, and we use the butler to get the collect. And we do the same thing using this uh, string to get the difference exposure. And here you use this to get the template that has been used to produce the difference exposure. And another thing that you may need is the source table that uh, is the list of all the sources detected on the particular difference images. And you use this uh, data set type to query for it. Okay, and this is again to get the supernova coordinates on top of the image. Finally, you use this, you launch it while explaining it, to plot all the cutouts. So everything is together into three different subplots. And in the first one, there is the template, then we will have the exposure, and then the different image. And I am using this little trick over here to have cutouts because I'm not running an every function to produce cutouts, but I'm just imposing that the image is centered in the supernova uh, coordinates and minus 100 plus 100 to have an extension. And you will see something like that. So the center of the image is the supernova location 
And for this particular source, you can see that it is not present into the template, of course, as it should be. And the template is a coad, so it's much deeper than a single exposure. Then on the exposure, maybe it's not so easy to see, but you may see a small point in the center, which is the supernova. And if you go to the difference, you will see nothing but the source that is variating with respect to the template, which is the supernova location. And you can do this for all the points on the light curve, because with this cell here, I uh, plug, I printed the list of all the CCD visited D, for instance, for the I band. But you can change the band and you will have the other one. So for each point on the light curve that I showed you before, you can look at the images to see how they look like. And if everything is fine, so there's nothing to worry about. But this thing is particularly important. For instance, if you are looking to a light curve and you are seeing something strange. So you may want to look at the images to see if there's something that should not be there. I'm not sure, for instance, uh, it should be also a satellite track or something like that. I hope that there will be removed with the Python, but who knows? So it's important that you have the possibility to explore this thing. Any questions so far? Okay, so the last thing that I would like to show is how to launch the different imaging tasks using your own templates. Because here we are just plotting the image that has been used as templates in, from, for the data release. But you may play around and select another quad or another color image as a template. And to do this, as there's nothing to see for this particular object, uh, you can run the notebook again, but using this bonus cell that was here above. So this cell, uh, the only thing that it does is to change the object so that you will have an object more interesting to try to play around with uh, changing the templates. So I won't run all the code again. You just need to put this as code if you want to run it. Well, if you do this as row, it would be just a cell that is not executed. So I already have the notebook that has been run using uh, this cell. And I will show you the light code. That is the one that uh, some of you were looking at before. So it is the light curve of something which seems like a supernova. There's this peak here. But if you look outside the peak, there is something that should be zero, but is not zero. So there is this negative fluctuations here. So the first time that I was working at the draft of this notebook, I was just trying to uh, prepare something to explore what may happen into this region. So this is the light hood that you have. And if you go down, this is the coad with the supernova. If you look at the, at the results, the images of the, the different images, you see that for the first one, the one with a negative flux on the difference image, there's nothing of the exposure. But in the template, there's the supernova. So of course, when you do the difference, you will see it's not clearly visible here maybe, but there is this black dot, which is black which is because it is a point with uh, um, a flux is with, uh, which is uh, below the one measured for the, the background. So you will have this, uh, this fluctuation that may affect uh, the signal. So for this object, I tried to change the template using another one without a, a transient contaminating it to see, to test the difference imaging task. And of course, I'm not proposing it as a solution of the problem. As I mentioned in the beginning of this presentation, I'm just showing in this notebook a couple of tools that may be useful to be applied for other cases. So to launch the different imaging task, here is the, the link to the package that we are using. And we just a warning that this is a draft of something that we are working on at the, the TBS DP0 task force. 
because these tasks that we are using, if you launch it, will return a warning because it's deprecated and it will not be working anymore with a newer version of the pipeline. So we are testing the, the other one, the new one, which is getting some error. So we are trying to understand why. So I will show you this, but bear in mind that the notebook will be updated using a different stack. So this is just an example to show you how to go on GitHub to the LSST pipe task and see all the functions that are available and how to use it. So if you are familiar with Python in general, this will be very easy for you. If you're not, it can be more difficult. So uh, if you go on GitHub on the LSST uh, repo, you will click on pipe task, for instance. And if you click here on Python LSST and pipe again, tasks, you will see a series of uh, files that are Python codes, okay? And this is the, the, the full path. And here we are importing image difference config and image difference task. So you will see from lsst.pipe.task.imageDifference import these classes. Okay, so we are importing this. So we are using this path. So here we go to image difference, which is this one. And if you open this file, you will see all the description on the code and all the available classes. And within each class, you will see a couple of functions introduced by this def. So we are importing this class, that is the configuration, the default configuration to run the image differencing task. And we are importing the actual task, which is this one image difference task. And here it explains that it is to subtract an image from a template and measure the result. Mm -hmm. These are the parameters required and you will see all the functions that can be used for this class. So let's go again here. So what we did was to select a new collect, a new exposure. And I selected an exposure which not contains the supernova in it. So we will do the difference using an exposure containing the supernova and an exposure not containing the supernova. So on the difference, you will see something to variate with a positive variation. That is what we expect. So I use this Calex new and this source new, which are related to a visit ID that I explored in a couple of attempts to have something that contains the supernova. So this is the, the import that we are doing. So we use the default configuration and we define this in the theme task, which is just the image difference task with the default configuration. And to run it, you just have to use the run function. Here you see dot run and the run function, if you go again to the code, you can find it. This is not the one, not yet. Okay, here it is, the run function. You see all the parameters that are required. And for instance, it requires the exposure. It requires the template exposure. And then there are also other parameters. Many of them are optional, so they are not required if you just want to test it but you have all the information here on the code. So what we did here was to use X exposure, the new Calex, which contains the supernova, and as a template, the old Calex, the one that I was showing before, this one, which not contains the supernova. So we launch this command. It may require a couple of minutes to be executed. And if you run it, you save the results into this rest variable. 
So here, with the same code as before, in the first display, you will plot the template, which is result.warped exposure, because it is being warped so that you can be the subtraction pixel by pixel. Here in the second display, we just plot the science exposure, which is the new color with the supernova inside. And the difference is this press dot subtract exposure dot image. We run this set and you will see this. So now the template is not a quad, so it's not deeper than the exposure. It not contains the supernova, but the supernova is present on the exposure. And if you do the difference, you see something here, which is the supernova. This is the, the flux that you are measuring here. So here you may use notebook. It is maybe number five. I don't remember. We told the information on how to launch source detection. And you may measure the fluxes that you are uh, for, for these sources here. But as I told you, this is providing a warning. And the warning is here, OK, because we are using this image difference task that is deprecated and will be removed after version 25. So that's why this is just a draft and we are working on the notebook to update it because the new version, the new code, which is this one, is subtract images. You can go here to see all the in the information. Okay. I will I don't do it now. But for some reason is providing an error that we are still trying to to understand. So this is a work that we can do maybe in one of these breakout rooms or if, we, if some of you is interested, you can join the uh, TVS DP0 task force meeting where we discuss all possible problems. So this, for example, is an error. And this is an example trying to solve this error of what we can do with our meetings. So do you have any questions, something? Was it working with you? Yeah, it was working. I do have a like a couple of questions um, here. So it's the task that we're using here is called like it's the image difference task, but you can see in the output that it's actually it's also doing PSF matching. So it's not just a straight subtraction, um, but it's uh, this one, this one that I'm using. Uh, yeah, like you can see it's doing PSF matching. Um, yeah, yeah. And doing image subtraction. I just wanted to point out in this. I'm not sure about this exactly, but running these tasks like outside of the full pipeline could be. I don't know. It might be dangerous sometimes. Um, like this is what this isn't doing is. I don't think it's doing any warping. It's not checking that the inputs have been warped yeah, yeah, yeah. and matched. I completely agree with you. Yeah? This is just okay. from my user point of view to try to to see if there's room to do something producing uh, your own data yeah. using the one that you have. But it, it is more complicated than just using the data. Yes. You need to, to go to the code, with this one, to understand everything and work with people that develop the code. So it is far more complicated, of course. Yeah. And you need to be careful to, to use these results if you want to do science. So, yeah, that's course. kind of all I wanted to point out. I think like DCR corrections on the template aren't included. This is like it's just PSF matching and a different yes, thing. Yes, yes, yes. It is working for this situation. Yeah, it's a simple toy model, nothing yeah. worse. So yeah. don't do this just to apply it to your science case. <laughs> that's the word. Yeah. Um. And then, so I haven't looked into this at all. So the new versions where we go to subtract images.py, um, like right down at the bottom, I can see that you're also importing Zogi. So yeah, because I, I, I was trying, I don't use it now, but I was trying also to use this and to see the difference between the, the default laptop task and the Zogi one. But it's just a work in progress. Okay, that's that's what I was wondering if there's a yeah, yeah. between the old version and a new version. It's also a different um, 
a different subtraction or a different PSF matching algorithm. Yeah. It, it allows you to use different uh, uh, runs uh, for different procedure to do the difference. Mm -hmm. Cool. Excellent. This is good. I learned a lot. I haven't seen, um, I've been trying to do more like make make pipelines and run things like as part of a pipeline, but it's nice to see examples like this too, where you're just picking out the one thing and just uh, I'm running it without having to do like the full. Yes, using the full configuration to see yeah. what happens. If there's something completely wrong or something unexpected. So yeah. I try to, to understand why. So yeah. Yeah, no, this is really, really good demo, and I learned a lot. So um, I'm going to turn it over to other questions. Maybe Douglas, you got your hand uh, up? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, so first of all, uh, as other people mentioned, very nice uh, demo. I and I, I learned a lot too. Um, actually, this is probably not a question for Vincent, so it may be for. Uh, uh, some of the other people on the uh, 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 from the project team. Uh, any idea why in that first uh, wh why uh, the template the the deep template the coad template uh, it hadn't removed the the supernova and why we got the negative results? I I, I would have thought that the, Here's the one. yeah the okay. Yeah, this is something that has been discussed the, the, the first time that it was uh, it came out. And uh, the point, if I remember correctly, is that during the, the procedure to, to produce this uh, data for DP0.2, the, the images that can be used as template are not the images for the um, of the first year, so the, the first detection that you have, but the coad is the, the it made up the images with the third best thing. So it is. Uh, uh, it may happen that we have the supernova, and actually Melissa did an analysis, and it is like sixty percent of supernovae are in this problem. Uh, okay. Is it correct? Okay. So that could be a consideration, especially early on in the survey, if they if you follow until we have plenty of uh, overlaps. Yeah, in the survey you should not have this problem as soon as you select as a template, one image that is older than the images that you want to detect dance and so on. Okay. All right, okay, th th thank you very much. Once again, very nice demo. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Any question or curiosities, or also, I don't know, suggestion to how to continue to work on on this for the future. Vincenzo, I could ask you maybe this more general question. You know, like what was the biggest problem working with this data? Like, what would you like most to have it improved, or like, okay. you know, if somebody made the software. What, okay. would, what would be the most use? Did you find the features that you were missing? Because, you know, I know when I was showing, and I can give a bit of background, because when I was showing this notebook to other people, what we were amazed is amazed how much work one had to put in order to get the light curves out. And I completely understand how this is happening. But, like, would you give a little bit of thoughts about okay. that? Yes. So, my thought is that I don't think I need the I or also the other delegates need a particular feature. Uh, it is difficult some, sometimes to, to, to have information on what you would like to do. And yeah, for example, uh, I showed you that uh, maybe this is something that it can be changed very easily to produce a sort of glossary because this information here is a little bit hidden in all the things, maybe it's also present of not on notebook number four, but sometimes you want to to have something and you are not sure of okay, I want a quad, I want a color or a different image. What do I need to give the butler? 
to have it. So sometimes it is, it is difficult and uh, maybe we could work to provide uh, information in, uh, in something that it is very concise and not dispersed so that it is easier to, to understand what you need to do if you want to do something. And another thing that I think it could be useful is to work on more, let's say, advanced tutorial using things like this difference imaging task or all the other tasks so that we can try to work on them to also help people that are testing them using a, a test with DP0 because I think it would be important. So sometimes it's difficult because both for this and for the run that I was doing with the, the new version that I'm getting this error here, which is key error zero. So I'm not such an expert of Python and programming, but it, it's difficult. So it took some time to understand why I have this error. So you try to look at the code, you try to dig in, and it's not always it easy to understand why you have this error because you don't have a clear guide explaining you what you can do and what you can get out of it. Right. So. That's the only thing that I will try to improve in the future. Yeah. So, um, hi, Melissa, can you just add something? Yeah, so um, um, Devin, I sort of guess you're asking that question a little bit with your link hat on in terms of, you know, what can you help the community with and how can you provide, you know, how is Link going to help provide the community with uh, access to extra tools uh, to help them exploit the, the data? One thing I think I noticed from this is that the, the um, the query that gets a light curve is going to be very, very, very common, and that has to join the right. visit table. Um, and uh, Vincenzo did ask during his tutorial, I, you know, I'm not sure if the time information's in the four source table or not, if you start to join it, you do. Um, and you will have to, because all that time information's in the visit uh, table and the source detections are in the, in the detection tables. If you want to construct a time series, you do have to join those two tables. And joins are always expensive, and that's going to be a very, very common operation. So um, if Link is, you know, if Nevin, if you've got your Link hat on here and you're thinking of how you can assist the the community i think that things like um making it easier to uh extract time domain information in a with a higher level interface could be a good uh, thing to right look at. It, it is it is because um yeah it is you, you of course got exactly where i'm coming from because and that's basically the only thing we did so far because i was looking you know some of the other packages such as you know tests or kepler when you open the slide curve package what is beautiful about it that you know they have these tutorials where you can in a line get a light curve from kepler and you can play with it you know and that just makes it so great for yeah. the user that you can get real kepler data in a second you know and of course for lsst at the boba that you know you you can see how much of like internal knowledge you have especially to make these joins and such and there are these tricks such as exactly what uh, vincenzo is showing here changing fluxes to magnitudes they're like Mm -hmm. A lot of the knowledge which you kind of have to do, yeah. Yeah. Mm. But I, I noticed because then when we were looking at this here, you know, it's it looks complex at the moment, which mm -hmm. of course I think I think it's something that we can uh, improve yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really good for people to have, have an understanding of the of course catalogs to understand the, you know in detail the data they're working with but you don't once you understand that you don't need to do it every time yeah you know i don't milk the cow every time i want a cup of coffee <laughs> so yeah yeah um, exactly yeah yeah thing yeah i even noticed when uh and i will finish with that i promise like when yeah. i was running vincenzo's notebook which was operated on on dp1 and then it needed to be changed to dp0 which i mm -hmm. i mean it took me you know 
an hour or something yeah. and I, yeah. I have some knowledge behind so you know yeah it's true yeah and the scheme and that, yeah that's a good point actually Nevin just so everyone knows our schemas will probably continue to evolve through right period and that's a lot what the dps are for but both for us to understand what's the best schema and for you guys to get used to it but i do hope that once we hit data release one we, we're pretty stable it doesn't mean there won't be changes but i think there'll be a lot fewer changes hmm. 